I was in a mess, and all the guys have been in a mess, you know exactly, and females, you know exactly what we're talking about when we talk about the centering song. How many ever heard the centering song? The mess notes? You know what the centering song is about? The centering song is something that we do because we're playing, we're playing praise and worship, and we're worshiping God, and we're having a good time. <laughs> and before we get into any stuff, any talks or anything going on, we do the centering song. And of course, the centering song actually gets our mind on what we're doing. It pulls us back. It pulls us back in the direction. And this has been one of my centering songs, of course, all I can remember. Because I'll be sitting there and I'll be worshiping God. Sometimes I get a little out of Wow. I know I'm the only one. Anybody in here ever get out of whack besides me? Yeah, it's not hard to get out of whack, amen. How many's ever got out of whack? Look at somebody and tell them, ask them, are you out of whack? Matter of fact, you can look every now and then. Somebody says to me, because I'm out of whack, and they go, you whack me up. <laughs> All right, so we're going to do this. This is my centering song. I want y'all to stand. We're going to do it again, okay? God's awesome. All the time, God is awesome. He always takes care of us. He's never late. He's never early. He's always on time. All right? Go ahead, DC. I'm coming back to the heart of worship when it's all about you. It's all about you, Jesus. I'm sorry.
We love you, Lord. We praise your name. We thank you for your grace and your mercy. We know, God, you're alive and well. And we thank you for all that you do. I ask you right now, Lord, to, to just bless us abundantly this morning. Help us to get this and to move on with it, Lord. Father, not to beat ourselves up or beat somebody else up. We just learn from it and keep on going. We know you can do this, Lord. We trust you. In the name of Jesus, we pray. The church said? Amen. Amen. Now, 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 we're talking about ten relationship principles and, and the actual verses in Hebrews, uh, chapter 12, verse 14. Follow peace with all men and holiness without which no man shall see the Lord. I'm not going to get all into it because I really, really took it apart last week. But what I'm saying is, follow peace with all men, meaning you do your best to make the, to heal stuff. It says that we're, follow peace literally means, or peace means to buy back together that which is separated. The stuff that has been torn all up, you put it back together, set a bone, put stitches in it, whatever it needs. So, so you do your best, you chase after, you, you take the initiative to, to bring peace into a situation, to repair situations. And, and sometimes the best thing you can do to repair situations is back up that God do it. Amen? But sometimes I want it right now. Sometimes I want it immediately. And God says, just let me have it. Yeah, I got this. All right, so now, uh, do it in a way that pleases God, honest about which no man shall see the Lord. All right, so now, now here we go. This is from last week. Won't take a whole long time. Just want to ask you, how would you like to see a positive difference in any and all of your relationships? That means on your work, on your job, with your family, uh, uh, with your co-workers, uh, with church members, wherever. You want to see a positive difference. Remember, this is about communication. This is it. Oh, let me tell you what we talked about last week, and then we're going right straight into the other ones. So let's look at that. Remember, that's a gun, and the bullets have I'm sorry on it. I hear noise. Is somebody... Uh, is that me? Is that my pacemaker? I want to make sure it's working right, because that's my pacemaker. We can't really go out of here. It's not like it's going... To... Is that what it is? It's warming up? Okay. So, so is this is it this stuff right here, DC? Stop, is that, is that? Okay. So, uh, communication, here it goes. It's not what you say. Remember it is. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. Remember this now. A lot of us say, well, I told him I'm sorry. Oh, really? Really? You know, uh, uh, there has been times where, where you know, you see on the, on, on the especially on the cowboy movies, when the woman's going crazy, or on the war movies, a woman or a man's going crazy, and they have, somebody has to go in and slap them. Why are they slapping? Because they're being mean to them? No, they're trying to stop them. They've gone on a rake, they've gone on a rant, and they're trying to stop them. So they do something to say something that jolts them. So they've got to stop and think of what they're talking about. Well, sometimes God jolts us. We don't like it, but I thank God He loves us enough to jolt us. Because watch this now. It's not what you say, it's how you say it. So watch this real quick, like, it won't take a lot of time. Uh, like I did last week, explain all of them. Uh, 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 communication can be uh, discouraging. It's a cannibal. It'll eat away at your heart. It'll eat away at your emotions. It just eat away. It causes distrust. It will cause you to caution yourself when you're around that person. Soon it'll be disharmony. You can't communicate with them. You try, but it's really hard. And then finally, disruption. You cease communication. But positive is, now you bring encouragement. You got trust. You have harmony. And you have connection. We had a good time last week. This is a lot of stuff. I didn't realize it. Quite how much meat was thrown on the plate. One thing about it, you don't get happy meals when you come here. When you come here, I promise you, you're going to get praise and worship man in, in sermon. You're going to want to go to the steakhouse. Amen. Praise God. Somebody say amen. Amen. I heard somebody say, I'm already full. Who said that? <laughs> Here's the five relationship principles from last week, and then we're moving on. Amen. We see people through our own lens. We, we, people can tell you how other people are, but you see them through your own lens. And so because you see them through your own lens, you've got to be careful. Because if you see yourself, you'll see others, right? If, if, if you think some person's body hard on judging and body hard here and there, sit back and look because it might just be that you are too. A lot of times we look at people, we don't realize that we're looking in the mirror. Right? We're looking in the mirror. When you look in the mirror, you don't like what you see. Sometimes you're looking at people and you don't like what you see. It's because you're seeing what you have inside of you and it hurts. People don't care how much you know, so they know how much you care. Number three, learn to listen from the heart. Number four, believe in the best in people usually brings out the best in people. What are you looking for in people? I mean, uh, you know, there's certain people I've noticed. Think about it in your own life. Please think about this in your own life. Close your eyes for a minute. Close your eyes and ask a question. I want you to think about, 
I want you to think about two people in your life, just two. I want you to think about the person that you think probably the most of, and I want you to think about the person that you probably think the least of. I want you to think about this now. Close your eyes. Don't look at anybody else. Please don't point to the person beside you, whatever you do. Think about the person you love the most or care the most for and the person you care the least for. Now, both of them, think about it, both of them can do the exact same thing. Maybe whatever it did, it hurt your feelings or it hurt the situation. Now, the person that you love the most, the person that you care for the most, you usually give them the benefit of the doubt. Just think about it. They get the benefit of the doubt. Well, probably they're having a bad day and... And, and this is just a tough time and we got to look out for them because they have these problems going on and so I just take care of this. I'll, 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 I'll cut them some slack. Now, the same exact thing was done by the person you care the least for. The person you care the least for, immediately you say, they're just trying to hurt me, they're just trying to tear things up, they're just trying to kill things. And so I'm here and I'm going to take care of it. You know what? The same thing happened, the same, the same exact thing happened with two people, but the one you cared the most for, you get the benefit of the doubt. The one you cared the least for, you're ready to shoot. Now, that in our own mind, God has to deal with that in us because everybody, everybody, if you get into your eyes again, what you look for is what you find. If you go outside now and you start looking for Easter eggs, I'm pretty sure you may not find one, but you're not liable to find one because you're out there looking for Easter eggs. Amen? <laughs> If you've got to look at the rocks, where are you going to go? You're going to see them. If you've got to look at a beautiful sign out there, you're going to see it. Amen. If you want to look at that sign, you may walk out and not even know the sign's there. What you're looking for is usually what you find. So if I'm trying to find peace and harmony with a person and find peace and harmony in a relationship, if I'm looking for it, I'll find it. But if I'm going in right to start with and thinking we're going to go down, we're going to fight, it's going to be a mad dog drag down, guess what? It's not going to work because you get out of what you expect. You find what you're looking for in every relationship, especially husbands and wives and kids and their parents. Think about it. You find what you're looking for. So believe the best of people brings out the best of people. Number five, hurting people hurt people. It's not something that you like. It's not something that you care for, but hurting people hurt people. All right? Now, here we go. Let's go into the new, the new stuff here. Ready? Print principle number six. This is so cool. Uh, uh, be kind and helpful to each other, tender heart, compassionate, or compassionate and understanding, forgiving one another, and, 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 and uh, freely, uh, give freely, and just as God also freely for, or forgive, readily and freely forgive others as God has forgiven also you. So principle number six, admit wrongs and forgive quickly. I'm going to let it sink in for a minute. Admit wrongs and forgive quickly. You see, see, a lot of times we're so eager for somebody else to apologize for what they've done, but we're not so eager to apologize for what we've done. Amen? Matter of fact, it's kind of like, you know what? Uh, uh, I, here's why, because I judge myself by my intentions and I judge you by your actions. And so because of that, it all gets messed up. If I was to judge all of us by our intentions, it would be different. If I judged all of us by our actions, it would be different. But usually, because I know what I was thinking when I did it and what I was trying to do, I judge myself by my intentions, I judge you by your actions. So no matter what you do, it may cause a problem. So here it goes. Watch this. Look, look. Admit your wrongs. Admit them. And, and forgive quickly. Now, now, take responsibility for your own actions. This, this, this is the core. This is this is the core. Please listen. Because this will make you grow. This will put spiritual hair on your chest. Amen? All right? <laughs> okay, ladies, this will put, 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 put some gas in your tank. Amen? Guys, this might put some spiritual hair on your head. Amen? All right, so here we go. Take responsibility for your actions. That's the core of a healthy, a healthy and productive relationship. If I don't take responsibility for my actions... Then I find myself sinking deeper and deeper and deeper. And if I don't learn to take reaction or take responsibility for my own actions, I can really start acting really, really bad and not even notice it. I can really get under, I mean really get under and not even pay attention to what I'm doing because I'm not taking responsibility for my own actions. Instead, I'm thinking that you should take responsibility for my actions. By fact, I say, look what you made me do. How many ever said that? I have. I try not to say it anymore. 
Every now and then I'll slip up and say it. But guess what? When somebody's going, look what you made me do. What you need to tell me is, I can't make you do a thing. We learned that from Adam. That's right. Oh, yeah. Adam's an you may ask what's going on. Adam said, is that woman you gave me? And that woman said it was that snake. Yeah, it was her excuse. And, of course, the, leg, the snake had, didn't have a leg to stand on. <laughs> so, is next time somebody says, you made me do this, you look back and say, I can't make you do a thing. You chose to do that. Okay? Put it back on them because they don't make you do that. Unless they're swinging and you got a duck, yeah, you made me duck. Yeah, I had a duck. You're going to hit me in the head. All right, ready? So now, if you make a mistake, here it is, quickly. If you make a mistake, come on up here, buddy. It'll work. If the batteries don't die again, I'm telling you what, this is, I need some double up, some triple A battery job. Technology. Isn't it awesome? Modern technology works when, it's, when it works. It's good when it works. It's bad when it doesn't. Right. Let's see here. Satan, Satan definitely don't want you to hear this. Because this will make you grow. Okay. Alright. Here we go. Let's try it again. All right, there we go. Say, Satan, you don't win. Say it. Satan, you ain't gonna win. Y'all sound like y'all meant that too. <laughs> if I ever ask God, I'm sick and ask you to pray for me. If you do it like that, please don't. <laughs> Lord bless him. Lord, he needs your strength. <laughs> like the testimony services back in the Church of God. Y'all pray for me. The devil's been on me all week. I don't think I ever make it. That's the testimony, sir. Okay. Okay. Here it is. If you make a mistake, own it. Don't make somebody else. Own it. It may not be all entirely your fault, but own your part. Own it. I remember a fountain many times. I went up and apologized. I know good and well. I was sitting in a big old meet with all the managers. And 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 the guy, the manager sat beside me, the engineer sat beside me, had blown it. I knew he blew it. He did not keep up his promise. He didn't keep up anything he said. He had been messed around. He blew it. But because he blew it, it looked like I blew it. I was waiting on him. Until he started, I couldn't do a thing. So they went down and they said, I looked over at David. His name was David. Looked over at me. And they said, okay, David. My friend, Mr. Fountain, said, David? There was two Davids. And so I'm thinking, I'm sure me ain't calling me, and I didn't do it. I know I didn't do it, man. He done his job. He goes, David. I looked over and said, your name is David, isn't it? I said, yeah. I want to say, well, so is his. He says, why isn't this working? And I said, I'm sorry. I just got tied up in some, in some red tape, and it's my fault. I'll make sure it's handled. The red tape was sitting beside me. So thank you. Thank you. There you go. Cool. The, 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 the red, the red tape was set beside me, but instead of me going, well, if he do his job, I do mine. You know what? We'd have been in that, we'd have been back in that meeting for another hour. But instead, look, uh, uh, when I said it's my fault, it blew everybody away because they were so used to everybody passing the buck. And finally, the vice president engineer looked at me, and everybody just looked at me, and they were quiet. And finally, the vice president engineer just looked at me and said, "We forgive you. Move on." And I'm thinking, wow, this was the shortest meeting, all because I just been and took, I, I claim responsibility. I had not done my part, but I couldn't do my part because he hadn't done his part. Amen? So, so again, if you make a mistake, own it. If you treat somebody poorly, then ask forgiveness. You know, you're never any bigger in somebody's eyes until you ask forgiveness. When you're asking forgiveness, I'm so sorry. I am so, so sorry. You know, uh, just like with Bethany, I'm going to tell you, some of y'all, most of y'all know this, Bethany one day, I got called back here in praise and worship, trying to learn a song, and Bethany's about to say her arm's hurt. Well, her arm had hurt for about a month since we had that wreck, and it was just, I thought it was a pulled muscle because she got knocked out. 
when we got hit in the rear end and it exposed her belly button, but it also hurt her ear. So I just thought it was still that. And I was giving her being gay and ibuprofen. And she was back there crying. She said, it hurts so bad, Daddy. It hurts so bad. And I said, Bethany, you didn't tell me any of this on the way up here. You waited until right now to tell me now. And I said, can you please stop this? And so, so uh, I prayed for her, and I walked back in here. And I felt so bad because I said, you know what? She said, but Daddy, it's tingling. This time it's tingling. I don't know why it's tingling. So the next day I took her to the doctor, and that's when the start, that's when they found the tumor. And within a few days, there was malignant cancer. And so I have apologized to that girl a hundred times. I said, I was just taking it as usual. You just doing your normal thing, trying to make the pope cuts. <laughs> and I was in a hurry. And so I have beat myself a hundred times over that, and I beat myself a thousand times over listening to the doctors about her belly button. Instead of listening to them, I should have just took matters in my own hand and took her somewhere else. But when you got doctors and surgeons looking at you, you're thinking somebody would know something. You know what I'm saying? And so, 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 but I have. You know what? You know what, look? Watch this. I asked her, forgive me, Beth. And she said, Dad, I forgave you when you did it. You saw somebody slapping you in the face again? So watch. So watch, this is cool right here. Getting defensive. And this was written, this was written a week, a week ago. This is part of the principle. Let's cut them in half, okay? Getting defensive or, bow, or bowing up never makes a relationship better. You might be right, but you'll never win. Are you, excuse me. You might be right, but if you always have to win, you'll always lose. Which is more important? Peace or you being right? I can think of a lot of things right now that I know. I know, I actually know about a lot of y'all in here. And out there and in my family that, hey, I can tell you you want to make it better? Well, this is that, but you know what? Peace is better than me having to be right all the time. can't see good out there. Y'all really are just, I see some dark eyeballs. Y'all look like y'all, all the Adams family out there, just dark eyeballs. <laughs> Which is more important, to be right all the time? To be Mr. Know-it-all, be the, I'm the one that's always got the answers, I know everything, or just keep your mouth shut. Remember, the best way to save face is keep the bottom half shut, is to let God handle it. Because I found out when God handles it, wow, that's amazing what happens. Amen? So now, when you are wronged, forgive quickly. Keep short list. Because if you've got to keep a list, there's, I remember back in the day when I used to get, used to do this, I used to stay mad at people. And I remember being mad at this person and, and got mad at him. And, and I hadn't seen him in a while. When I saw him, I started to go up and hug him. And I had to stop and think, wait a minute, I'm mad at them. And I said, well, what am I mad about? I got to remember before I get there so I can be mad at him again. That's crazy. So, so. <clears throat> You will live with less stress and enjoy more life more, more or enjoy life more if you can just learn. You ain't got to always be right. But you gotta let God take it. Always. Alright, watch this. Now remember, he who sows sparingly will also reap sparingly. He who sows generously, that blessings may come to others, will also reap generously and be blessed. That each one give thoughtfully and with purpose, just as he's decided in his heart, not grudgingly nor under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver and delights in the one his heart. In his gift. Now, let me tell you something. You think it's just about the offering plate. How many things it's just about the offering plate? Don't put your hands up. How many things it's just about the offering plate? Okay. Nope. Offering plate's a small part. You know what this is about? Every area of my life. Every area. Do I give to others? Do I give my time, my talent, my treasure? Do I take care of others? Do I do what I can to help others? You know, I'm always thinking about me, 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 me. My name is, you know, uh, my, I can't think of what it is. My name is Bennett, and I'm not in it. Me, 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 me. Give me, give me, give me. My name is Jimmy. Give me, give me, give me. No. you got to think about it. In every area of your life, learn to give. <laughs> give it yourself. Give it your time. Give it your talent. Give it, just give it yourself. You know, it, it's amazing to me that yesterday's Mighty Army was, it's amazing how one little bitty, one little bitty act of kindness can make a great big impact on somebody's heart. I remember one time, 
And I told some of y'all heard this. I remember one time we had a lady in the church, 80 years old. Her husband had died. I come by to visit her, and I looked outside, and she was outside with an axe. I said, what are you doing? She said, well, I've got a truckload of wood. I, I need to split it so I can burn it. <laughs> and I said, inside I was thinking, have you lost your mind? Yeah. Well, now I saw it, I said, little sister, no, no, don't take this wrong, but give me the axe and get in the house. And she said, excuse me, I said, give me the axe and get in the house. And she said, why? I said, I just buried your husband. I don't want to bury you. Now get in the house. And so I spent enough wood for her to, to stay warm. Then I went back to the house with somebody I just got out of jail that was in our church. A youth, one of the youth that just got out of jail. He was staying with me because his parents were invalids and they couldn't do anything with him. So I had him with me. And I come to him and I said, I said, get up. We got to go. He said, where are we going? I said, we're going to go do ministry. He said, minister? I said, yeah, you'll love this ministry. He said, cool, let's go. We got there, and I, guess, I said, you ever use the awl? I said, you ever use an a, a, a axe? He said, I thought you said it was ministry. I said, it is. He said, why well, come about? I said, you're going to bust that truck out of wood. He didn't like ministry too much that day. <laughs> but the cool thing was, about a week later, on the back road, there was two empty roads back in the back. And while we were singing, Two million euros filled up with her family members. I, some of them I'd only seen at the funeral, that's it. And I went back to them and I said, I'm glad to have you here today. Is there a special occasion? They said, no. They said, but any man that will stop doing what he's doing and chop wood for my mama, I want to be with him. And that back pews, those two back pews stayed full for years and got even bigger. Because of one time chopping wood for an old lady. The smallest act of kindness can take you a long way. So now, watch this. Always give more than you take. There's a lot of folks I know that you do this and then some. There's other ones I know that honestly attach to this on their eyelids. Always give more than you take. You see, God wants us to purpose in our hearts to live generously in all ways. You see, you, you can set your sights to give more than you take, and you know, this is a scorecard. I don't mean when they give me one, I'm gonna give them two. They, they, they bought me lunch, I'm gonna buy them supper. You know, now I'm not talking about that, not at all. Because you know what? And if you're just keeping track of what you're doing, you've missed the whole point. I don't keep track. Lord knows I don't keep track. Because I know, I'm just trying to please God. <clears throat> you know, I was, uh, <clears throat> I was at Hardy's. I call it my, my, my East office. I was at Hardy's counseling Wednesday night. And while I'm counseling with this person, this other guy comes in. This black guy comes in, looks over at me and says, Hey, Pop. All of DC's friends, Daniel's friends, called me Pop. And so, because D.C. and Daniel called me Pop, and I'm like, I said, hey. And he says, he starts talking to me, and he's talking to the person I was talk, talking with. And he says, uh, can I sit down just for a minute? I said, sure. And then he began some kind of, tell me all kinds of things, and then he just busted down crying. And I said, what's wrong, man? He said, I'm sorry. He said, I'm really having a hard time. He said, I said my mom was, my mom was in, in, in Williamston at the uh, at, at hospital there and says she's she's in the ICU and she's had a heart attack and not a heart attack she got cancer and and this cancer is getting the best of her she's in the in, in ICU and, and I would, I would really love to go see her tonight he said but I just can't get the situations going and I said well, what would it take to get you to see your mama tonight and he said well my cousin if I give him gas money he'll take me and I said how much did he want he goes, I can't ask you that. I said, let me ask you a question. How much did he want? He said, well, I can't ask you. I said, if I ask you that, how much does he want? He says, well, he said he would need $10 to get me there and back. I said, okay. And so he starts crying again. He's just crying. So the person I was counseling is sitting there with this guy, and we're all holding hands, and we're praying in the hardest. And then I look up at the man, and I said, look, I'm, I, he says, thank you so much. And I said, well, what are we sitting here for? Let's go get you to your mama. And he's crying, 
And as he gets up, I look at him and I said, you know what, have you had anything to eat tonight? And he said, no, sir. I said, let's go to, go to the counter. Went to the counter, I said, get whatever you want. She got what they wanted. We come back and told the other person, I said, we'll talk later. He said, sure. And that person was crying too. I said, we'll talk later. Uh, and and, and so I took the guy and I took him to where he said he wanted to go. And he had his, had, he had his, he had his food and all that. And he got out and said, and he reached over and hugged my neck as he got out of the car. And he said, thank you for letting me go see, help me see my mama tonight. Now, let's just go through a few things here. I really didn't know him. He knew me because of things he said. He knew me, but I didn't know him. Number two, he was he was a black guy. That means nothing to me. I'm just saying, in general, he's a black guy. I had to take him down Fourth Street. <laughs> People isn't watching know what I'm talking about. And I had to tell the other person. I can't talk to you tonight because I got to talk to them. But that person was saying, please take him to his mama. Please, please, please. And we prayed with him. Bought him supper. Paid for his cast. Out of nowhere. Out of nowhere. Matter of fact, he took all the money I had right then. That's all I had. It was his supper and that on me. But again, and I called Linda. Linda says, where are you at? I said, I'm on 4th Street. She says, tell me you broke that. And I started telling all what's going on. Okay, now let me ask you a question. Hypothetically, what if you were in Hardy's and a man twice your size, big old black man twice your size, comes in, looks at you and calls you pop or mom, and then starts telling you this story and crying like a baby. He even cried when he went to check out his food. When he get his food, he cried when he got his food. He couldn't even stop talking. So with all this stuff going on, what would you have done? Ask him to get on? Ask him to move on? I'm sorry, sir, I gotta go. What would you do? Or would you look at it as you're entertaining an angel unaware? Matter of fact, I told Linda, we said, what you doing on Fourth Street? I said, I'm entertaining an angel. So now, again, very important. Giving more than you take. It's a way of living, uh, and when your motives are pure, it'll bring you great joy. I, I won't pull away from him, and I just, I just felt such a peace. And I told, I've told my wife in the last month, there's this the third time that I felt that, and I believe God was sending me angels. The third time. And each time, when Linda says, what you doing? I said, I'm entertaining angels. She goes, okay, I, I know what you're doing. Now, do you give more than you take? Or are you always give me, give me, give me, give me, give me, give me? Because even in your relationships, man and wife, husband, if you take more than you give, and wife, if you take more than you give, and vice versa, the relationship will go lacking. The best way for a relationship to work in any kind of relationship between your children, between you, your co-workers, whatever, is for you to give more than you take. Okay? Now, now, principle, and it's good stuff. Yeah. Principle number eight. Therefore, encourage, admonish, exhort one another, edify, strengthen, and build up one another just as you were doing. And, and of course, seeing these scriptures sometimes, you don't think about them the way we're bringing them to you. But now, these are our amplified versions, so it's got the Greek in it and the Hebrew. All right, so here we go. Watch this. Make sure that you add value to people. Think about it. Now, by adding value, you can add value to people in just a simple way. How can I do this? You can do it in simple ways. You can do it in big ways. You know, <clears throat> but, but here's what adding value is. It's to contribute to somebody's life so it's better. I can tell you, every last one of you in here is added to my life. That's awesome. Matter of fact, when I get around some of y'all, you know, and a lot of people I know of, especially my church folks, but I get my church folk or I get around certain people in the community and certain people in my own family, when I get around them, my heart jumps. Because I know, and I'm not talking about gifts. I'm talking about going out of their way to do for you like you would go out of your way to do for them. And or when you're around them, it's not always what I can do for them, but now it is, okay, let's work on this together. Let's get this going. Because then, 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 it's awesome. 
So you add value to people. Now, now <clears throat> it can be as simple as an encouraging word like Mighty Army. I get, I bet, and every week I get about 100 Mighty Armies back. I send out 850, I think. And every week I get about 100 back going, wow. That's amazing. How'd you know? And I go, I didn't. It's not me, it's the Holy Spirit. Don't even, I'm, just, I'm just a Western Union guy. That's all I am, Western Union. I said, but until it speaks to me, I don't put it out there. And so, so but it's just amazing. It's a simple, encouraging word. Uh, or you can do something like a lifetime of mentoring. And, and mentoring is not easy. Because when you mentor somebody, it's like it is. I had somebody come up to me in Walmart one day. And the man actually asked me. He said, I need you to help me. I need you to help me with my church. I need you to help me with my wife and my family. And I'm thinking, what kind of help is he talking about? And then he possibly said this word. He said, I need you to mentor me. And so I asked him, I said, are you serious about this? He says, I'm very serious about this. I said, because mentoring is not me just going around, you know, blowing kisses and fancy stuff all the time. Sometimes it hurts. Sometimes I'm going to get down to business and it's really going to hurt. But it's going to be for your growth. Now, do you really want me to mentor you? Because mentoring is one thing. I mean, being be your friend is one thing, but mentoring you, that's another. So, so, so that mentor may say things, the Bible says that the, 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 the kisses of the enemy, or excuse me, the, bruises, the, the kisses of the enemy are deceitful, but the bruises of an enemy are faithful. Meaning that sometimes you might hear something or see something that you don't like. But mentoring. So, so, so again, it might be mentoring somebody a whole lifetime, or just giving them an encouraging word, but still, you're adding value to people. Sometimes it involves enough love and courage. Uh, uh, to have a tough and honest conversation with somebody if they'll let you. And, and to give, the gift of eternal life is the greatest value you can give to a person. Now, who's through? Y'all looking like you want to be left alone. Right. Principle number one. Cool. It's cool. <laughs> Principle number nine, Hebrews 10, 25. Not forsaking or neglecting to assemble ourselves as believers is the habit of some people, but admonishing Warning, urging, and encouraging one another and all the more faithful as you see the day approaching. Okay, watch this. Uh, number nine, principle number nine. You can never encourage anyone too much. Now, I can fake it and be too much. I can give you some wild mess that makes no sense. You know, if you come to me and said, said man, you, you play that bass like nobody ever heard. My friend, I'm pretty sure if it, if it, if it, it's simply the orchestra that... Uh, Philomonic Symphony Orchestra heard you play the bass, and what you play for them. I go, okay, what you want. <coughs> but coming up and saying, you know what, you do a good job, and I see you're learning how to play over again because you learn something different every time. I say, you're doing a good job. I, you know, I, really, I really enjoy that. But you know what, or it really blesses me. That's encouraging. But to tell me, well, the Philharmonic Orchestra wants you, and that's not it. You didn't encourage me. As a matter of fact, that could be too much of that. Okay? And like, we were cutting up while ago, and DC and practice kept saying we had to go to an F sharp. F sharp. And this was hilarious because at the end of the song, nobody went to F sharp but DC. So DC turns around after the song's over and goes, F sharp! Y'all saw us laughing, didn't you? But all I could think about was Gilligan would always tell the professor and the skipper out to hit their head on the coconut. Watch out for the coconut. <laughs> <laughs> so did y'all hear me? I said, thanks a lot, Gilligan. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So now, it's very important. This, it is so, so important to encourage each other and to keep on doing it. That's part of coming to church. You say, well, I don't feel like going to church. I can get, I can get what I need off of television. No, you can't. You may get some Bible off the television. You may even hear some preaching off television. But you cannot get fellowship off that television. You go there and take that television by the hand and say, pray with me. I That's right. You know, I heard a guy one time. I actually heard it. Uh, uh, the guy used to say, I want you to walk across here and put your hand on the television and say, you'll feel God through me. And I said, he is taking advantage of ignorance. Because when you walk across TV, especially those old screens with CRTs, when you walk across the screen or walk across the room, room and touch it, you have got static electricity. And when you touch that thing, remember? 
So, you can't get fellowship anywhere like this except for in church. You can't get on television. Even if you had a, an instamatic feed, you could talk back and forth. You still had the fellowship you have here. Because here you got people with like problems, like faith. People that are learning the same thing, going in the right, the same direction. So, 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 so it's important. But not only are we here to learn from each other, we're here to encourage each other. So, so when we come in here, we need to be, look, I know that we've all carried some heavy loads this week. I know we're carrying heavy loads right now. But you know what? It's an amazing. I get strength when I come to being around y'all. I've had people tell me, say, well, you're the one preaching. How are you getting strength from us? By your smile, by your encouraging words, by just patting each other on the back saying, you know, God's got this. You know, hey, this isn't all. This isn't all me preaching to y'all. It's fellowship. It's something special going on. It's a family. It's a very powerful, powerful thing. You know, I sit back and I think about years ago when I first, when I was going to college, and I was working at Roses at night, and working at the TV shop in the daytime, uh, and on weekends when I weren't, weren't, weren't going to school, I was going to engineering school, and I remember all that work and all that stuff going on, and I'd get a little 30 minute break at, Har I mean, at uh, Roses, and I'd drive over to McDonald's, and I'd grab something from McDonald's, and I'd come back in the parking lot to eat, and I'd go back in and go back to work. And Mama would always say, well, son, I got you supper cooked. Why don't you come on and have supper? And I think about several semesters of me doing that. Me eating just about every night, eating at, my, eating at McDonald's. All we had in Washington was McDonald's and, and, and uh, King Chicken. That was it. So I remember going to McDonald's and, and, and getting stuff there every night. And now I look back over it. And you know what? You couldn't, I couldn't pay enough. To be able to have meals for mom again. She's gone. And I look back and think, you know what? All that time I could have had with her, and all that time I could have had with the family. But instead, I was going to Walmart, to Walmart, going to McDonald's, grabbing stuff again in the parking lot to eat, and going back in. I was messed out on so much stuff. And now I'm older, I look back over it, and I said, man, I could have kicked myself. I was, there's, a, there's a song, Dear Younger Me. D.C., you need to learn Dear Younger Me. Isn't it Mercy Me sings Dear Younger Me? Is it Mercy Me? Who is it? Yeah, Dear Younger Me, if I could tell you, <laughs> if I could write a letter to myself, and you know, when I was younger, I'd tell you not to worry about these little things and, and, and whatever to do. I look back and say, if I could just do it over again. But you see, when we come in here now, I don't want to miss out a chance to get with y'all. I don't miss out a chance to have fellowship with y'all because I know that when I get around y'all, something good's going to happen. But remember this, our relationships take time to get to time and it takes frequent and sincere work to get frequent and sincere encouragement. Now, here's the final one. Somebody say, praise God. Greater love is known than this than lay down one's life for his friends. Not ready? <laughs> I know you're talking now. <laughs> okay, maybe maybe we can maybe we can trade notes. All right, listen carefully. This one hurt. This one hurt. I did this one about like I said. I did this initially two weeks ago, but I didn't want to bring off ten at ten at the table at one time. But this one hurt. Trust is the lifeblood of all relationships. Trust. When it comes to relationship, trust is like a promise. And you should never break a promise. So that's the essence of trust. Watch this. People are counting on you to keep your promises. If I go to you and you tell me you're going to help me, and you don't, okay, well, I'm looking for the bright side. Maybe you were having a hard time. Maybe you just couldn't make it. Maybe you were working. There's a difference in a reason and an excuse. The reason is I got called in late for work. I, you know, I got called somewhere else. You know, uh, whatever. But an excuse is just something I picked out of the sky somewhere to keep doing what I said I'd do. So, if you keep telling me that you're going to help and call me any time, but I've called you three times and you never came, I'm not going to call you a fourth time when I get a bind. Because I'm looking for somebody to call I can trust. So 
Somebody asks you sometimes, why do why you do this by yourself? Why do you do that? Or why do you just take care of it? And I say, well, because I call three people, four people, and I've called them three or four times a piece, and every time I call them, they tell me they will, but when I ask them, I have, have it, they're not there. So I just take care of myself. Now, does that mean I don't love them? I love them. Lord knows I love them. Does it mean I won't do for them? I will break my back to help them. I'll do whatever I can to help them. But does it mean I need them in a crunch? No. Nobody expects perfection, but they do expect honesty, kindness, and do what you say you'll do. One day somebody called, I told this guy when I saw him, I said, and he was in trouble, he was in big trouble. And I said, you call me if you need me. He said, but sometimes it's not spiritual. I said, that's fine. I said, but you need me, you call me. I think two of these, two of these like this recently, and the guy said, I don't want to bother you. I said, no, you heard me. No matter what, you need me, you call me. I can't remember exactly what it was, but I get a call. And I'm busy, and here's this guy wanting to do something like, just, just off, arbitrarily, just something wild. And so I told Linda, I said, I gotta go. She says, why? I said, I'm gonna go help this guy get his cat out of the tree. And she says, get the cat out of the tree? And I mean, you're busy right now. You're doing school work and you're doing blah, blah, blah. I said, but I told him, if you ever needed me, call me and I'll be right there. And I said, even if it wasn't spiritual. And I said, he called, and so I'm going to do it. She said, but you're tired. I said, did you hear me? I told him, I'm going to do it. Then not long ago, on a Saturday night, I'm working on my sermon. While I'm working on my sermon, my Uncle Ralph calls. That's the guy with cancer. He lives across the street, but I live in the possum track. He called me and said, he said, he said, uh, he called me Cricket. He said, hey, Cricket. I said, what? He said, I'm in trouble. I said, what kind of trouble are you in, Uncle Ralph? And I told Uncle Ralph, same thing. You need me for anything, you call me. He said, I'm cold. I said, okay, what can I do? He said, you can leave a wood box for me. And I said, well, isn't, isn't there anybody around there that can load your wood box for you? Because all my cousins are all around there, and the uncles. He said, well, I had two or three tell me this. And I had two or three tell me they would have, but they never showed up. I said, okay, I'll be right there. And so, again, Linda said, you're doing your homework, you got paper due tonight, you got homework to do, I mean, there's a sermon due for tomorrow, blah, blah, blah. I said, I told Uncle Ralph, if he needed me, I'd be there. He needs some wood in this box. She said, but isn't there somebody else on Possum Track, not a slate stone that can do it for him? I said, I tried calling people on Possum Track. I can't get a hold of anybody. He said, she said, okay. And so I get in my car, I drive all the way to Possum Track, when I get out of the car, I walk in this house, he said, I'm so sorry. He said, I forgot you moved. He said, when I started calling you, tell you to go back. He said, but I know you. If you tell me you're going to do something. And so, I went in and I loaded his wood box. He said, I, he, the cancer's got him in the chemotherapy and stuff. He said, I sure thought I saw you driving down the lane in Possum Track today. And I said, no, Uncle Ralph, that weren't me. I'm driving down the lane in Washington. I'm not driving down the lane in Possum Track. He said, I'm so sorry I got you, I got you out of what you were doing. I said, Uncle Ralph, it's not a problem. I told you once, I'm going to tell you again. You need me for anything, you call me. So, let me ask you a question. Do you really want your relationships to be good? Think about all these ten things that we talk about. Very powerful. These ten principles will take your, every relationship to a different level. But at the very end, the very last one, trust. 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 When you can't see, when you don't, when you can't see God's hands and you don't understand what's happening, you can always trust his heart. When you can't understand the actions, you can always trust his heart. 
People need to trust you in a relationship. And when they can, you will take that relationship to such a level that amazing things happen. That's all, Stan. Golden rule, come on, DC. The golden rule, do unto others before they do unto you. <laughs> <coughs> do unto others before they do unto you. Is that one of them? Oh, that's wrong. Oh, excuse me. Do unto others as you would have them do unto you. Well, oh, that's powerful. That's pretty cool. Mr. Factor's always come into big meetings and go, Y'all boys remember the golden rule. And we say, And always said, What's that, Mr. Factor? He says, The man with the gold makes the rules. No. 